two. again we're going to be talking about uh, the effect that the length of the string has on the pitch now uh, the length of the string uh, determines the wavelength or the length of the wave of the sound you're hearing which is inversely proportional frequency which is mass speak for uh, the wave gets smaller the frequency goes up the pitch goes up right so uh, let's play at the scale real quick right? okay well, well we can take a look at the whole string vibrating so a shorter string frequency higher pitch, longer string, uh, lower frequency, uh, uh, lower pitch. We've already talked in uh, one of our other videos about the mass to length ratio, the thickness mm -hmm. of the string right. versus the thinness of the string. Um, thinner strings vibrate faster, less mass to move. Right. Uh, thicker strings, more mass, they vibrate slower, less vibrations per second, less hertz, less frequency, right. and that's how we uh, interpret pitch. That's how you change the length of the string. Now as a musician, what are some of the different ways you can change the length of the string while you're playing it? Well, what we do is we fret it. You, you, these are pieces of metal behind the string, and you can fret them like that and shorten the string. I can do that. I know the fretting part. And, uh, and, uh, but the other way you can do it, and uh, that's traditionally done, is to use a piece of metal or glass. Uh, this is a technique that comes into the Black South out of Africa, uh, but came into country music through Hawaiian uh, music, actually, in the 1920s. And this is a way of using a piece of metal, uh, a hard material, to shorten the string in the same way the fret acts underneath the string. This acts above it and shortens the length of it. So we get this sort of... It becomes a movable fret, sort of. like a human voice and get you quarter tones and notes in between the frets. something there that's kind of tricky we talked about earlier called harmonics right. where you can in fact shorten the string without but you can go up this way and make shorter strings that's right and the way Show us that. well the way this works is when you when you strike a string the whole string vibrates like this the whole thing goes like this in a, in a anti-node movement of a half wavelength thank you very much and um, I knew that I knew, I knew that. I knew you knew that. Yeah, yeah. We, we talked about um, it earlier. But if I pluck the, if I lay my finger lightly on the string, don't push it all the way down, just lightly, and I pluck this side of it, then both halves of the string will vibrate, but they'll vibrate in opposition. So you get sort of an S wave, one going this way and one coming this way. You can see it better on the bass strings. You may be actually able to see the string itself vibrating. Here we go a little bit. Now that's dividing the string in half, and we get an octave. If we just divide the whole length of the string in thirds, then we wind up with three segments vibrating this way. So we have a triple sort of thing going on. And this is a third over the seventh fret. And if you divide it in fourths, you get a double octave. You go up two octaves here. 
So we get the, the primary note by itself, the string open. We get the octave here at the 12th fret, dividing the string in half. At the third, we get the fifth, and then we get the next octave up there. If we go to the fourth fret, we get a major third. Another one, it starts to get a little faint because we're dividing the string to really little tiny pieces, right. and acoustically it doesn't work as well. But the harmonic series can be demonstrated on a piano where you depress a key silently and then bang a low note, and you'll hear the octave, the fifth, the fourth, the major third, the minor third, the seventh. You'll hear the, all those notes resonate as you go up the thing, and sure, that's sure. A, a physically generated. But that's a musical theory. Yeah, it's thing. a music theory thing, and it, but it has to do with physics and how sound right, right. behaves. Now, do you have a uh, a song that takes advantage of harmonics? Um, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to retune the guitar, so uh, we'll I'm talk gonna... about that next section. Great. Okay. Coming attractions. Coming attractions. <laughs> um, actually, I, I'll play you a little bit now. Um, because I'm in this tuning, just a little jazz piece, okay. and, and tie it up. So, uh, this is uh, "You Don't Know What Love Is." This was Malcolm X's favorite song, and this is uh, the instrumental. <laughs> Two.